Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff that I found for this episode. Starting off over at CNETsNews.com, uh, Tesla and Panasonic are said to be planning a $1 billion investment in a U.S. battery plant. Tesla Motors, Panasonic, and other Japanese companies are planning to invest close to $1 billion in a U.S. battery plant, according to Nikkei. With a target date of 2017, the lithium-ion battery facility will handle everything from processing raw materials to assembly, Japan's largest business daily said on Wednesday. Panasonic, which happens to be an investor of Tesla, is inviting a number of Japanese materials makers to join the project with a total investment estimated to reach more than 100 billion yen. Uh, this is uh, obviously a non-trivial non investment for an electric car maker, as the battery represents a large part of the vehicle's cost. So uh, should be pretty interesting to see how this turns out. Obviously, Tesla is in this for the long haul. They are planning to sell vehicle, electric vehicles for quite some time, as can be evidenced by the amount of uh, money that they are investing. From uh, the morningnewsusa.com, Apple releases iBeacon specs. Apple wants to have tighter control over who can use the iBeacon brand. For those of you who are living in a cave outside of Apple products, iBeacon is a new framework developed by the company to help use cheap Bluetooth LED devices to beam notifications to near iOS devices like smartphones and tablets. So uh, pretty interesting. I'm curious to see uh, what comes of this. You know, obviously this is one of those things that could potentially be big. So uh, be keeping an eye on it. From PCMag.com, Freescale intros a tiny ARM-based MCU for the Internet of Things. Freescale Semiconductor on Tuesday introduced its smallest ever ARM-based microcontroller unit for embedded devices in the Internet of Things market, the Kinesis KL03. It's, they're claiming it's smaller than a golf ball dimple, and I believe them. I've got a picture of it here I can show you guys. Look at that. Look at that. Tiny. That is small. Uh, pretty amazing. So basically it's 35% smaller than any competing Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller on the market according to Freescale. Uh, the chip maker is showcasing the new MCU embedded world in Nuremberg, Germany. Um, should be pretty interesting to see what comes of it. I mean, that's small enough. You could use that in a lot of places. That's for sure. I'm curious to see, uh, you know, how people end up ultimately end up using it. Uh, from eweek.com, Microsoft's JavaScript superset is now a first-class language in Visual Studio. Microsoft has announced the release of Visual Studio 2013 Update 2 and uh, the Community Technology Preview 2 and Team Foundation Server 2013 release candidate. Um, the Visual Studio 2013 release 2 um, community Technology Preview 2 builds on the newly added capabilities from uh, CTP1 while also providing functionality to make development teams even more productive. Uh, so should be pretty interesting. TypeScript is really, uh, let's see here. I don't really want to learn more. How can I get rid of this? Ah! Uh, TypeScript is really a large scale application for large scale application development in JavaScript um, and uh, should be pretty interesting since JavaScript is incredibly popular. A lot of web applications heavily use JavaScript. So we'll be curious to see what impact 
this has uh, on on uh, the internet at large. From uh, the FrenchTribune.com, NASA's Iris spacecraft captures its biggest solar flare yet. NASA's Interface Region Imaging Spectrograph, which is shortened to Iris, um, has captured an amazing video of the mid-level solar flare on January 28th, which is its biggest since it's launched into orbit last summer. The spacecraft is trained to travel through a region of the sun in order to understand how solar materials move and gather energy. It also helps scientists unravel the mystery behind our near star and the forces behind the huge eruptions termed as solar flares. Pretty awesome. Um, I've got a picture here, but I can't really show you without showing something else I don't want to show you. So I will not show that. From the register, Microsoft joins the Cloud Empire Club with Japanese bit barns. At its peak, it was said that the sun never set on the British Empire. Now you can say the same thing about Microsoft's global fleet of cloud data centers. That's right. The software company announced on Tuesday that it had brought two Japanese bit barns online located in Saitama Prefecture, which is the East uh, Japan and Osaka Prefecture, which is the west, west part of Japan. With these new facilities, Microsoft is now operating 10 distinct Azure regions around the world, including four in the US, two in Europe, and now four in Asia. That should tell you the kind of traffic going on in Asia. It, also, it has also launched a cloud service in China with a local partner, though this is not typically accessible outside that country. So. Should be pretty interesting to see what comes of this. From CNETsNews.com, uh, Tesla's Model S wins the best overall car by consumer reports for the year. Uh, the story of Tesla is a little bit like that of the little engine that could. It's a smaller company, which makes a product different than the rest, but it's been working to stay afloat in a world of giant car companies. Well, it appears that Tesla has just made it over the mountain. The company's all-electric Model S sedan was selected by Consumer Reports as 2014's best overall car. I think they won an award last year, too, for 2013, if I remember correctly. Uh, so anyway, th there's a nice little write-up about the Model S here on CNETsNews.com. Uh, Definitely check it out, especially if you're uh, looking at the Model S. Should be pretty interesting. That will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.